What's up everybody, it's your boy Bodyhead Productions here and today we're going to be talking about a little forgotten game called The Darkness. So, The Darkness takes place in New York City and you take control of Jackie Estacado. Badass name I know. Jackie was raised as a hitman for the Franchetti crime family and as you can guess he's very desensitized to murder by this point. So the story starts the night of Jackie's 21st birthday and from the start of the game you're on a car ride with a couple other hitmen, and you get the feeling things are weird. The two other men are being very vague, and you just kind of get a general feeling of unwariness. Sure enough, these feelings turn out to be true, as old Uncle Paulie, because there has to be an Uncle Paulie in any Mafia game, has planned your assassination. Not only has he planned to kill you, he's planned to kill you on the night of your 21st birthday. Jesus, Paulie, take him out for 300 drinks till he's piss hammered, then put a cap in him. But no, Paulie wants to do it the hard way. In fact, I got a surprise for you. On your birthday. It's in the closet. Have a blast. And during a scuffle of gun smoke, the darkness takes over. So, what is the darkness? The darkness is a cosmic entity that dates back before time. It's been in Jackie's bloodstream for generations, but only now decides to show itself. But we'll explain more of that in the next section. So, with the darkness taking over Jackie's body comes a series of new abilities. Being a demonic killing machine really has its perks, you find out. Darklings, or minions, can be summoned from the ground, and there are multiple different kinds. And these sassy bastards are great for backup. They'll use hacksaws to cut men in half. They'll pull out miniguns, which is very ridiculous and just gruesome. Dark tentacles. These are dark, spear-like objects that can be controlled and used to impale enemies. You stick them right through their stomachs, send them flying. The creeping dark. The ability to creep along the dark corners, walls, and ceilings and kill from afar. And finally, Jackie Estacado's Kamehameha. The ability to summon a black hole. They're all very lethal, with the black hole being by far the most destructive. And as the game goes on, you earn more and develop these powers more. But these powers do not come without a cost. Jackie's not in control anymore. So the real question is, why does Jackie get these powers and why now? So to have these superpowers, or super curse depending on how you look at it, activate at the time of your soon-to-be assassination, really couldn't have worked out better. But as we learn throughout the game, maybe Jackie would rather be dead than deal with this demon inside of him. It turns out, like I said before, Jackie's family carried the trait for generations. It's the atavism of the darkness. And honestly, how Jackie receives these powers really reminds me a lot of how Yusuke Yurameshi receives the powers of the Mazaku in Yu Yu Hakusho. So I'm going to put a clip from Yu Yu Hakusho explaining how Yusuke got the powers, and it's basically the same exact thing how Jackie Estacado gets the powers from the darkness that skips so many generations. Your prime objective is to terminate Yusuke Yorameshi. Pardon my impudence, sir. 
But doesn't Detective Yurameshi fight for our side and win? In fact, his track record is most impressive for a human, that is. No, but that's where you are wrong. He has the half-breed's blood coursing through his veins. A real half-breed? Hell. That is a vile accusation. And to level it in front of his corpse? It's ridiculous! His mother may act like a monster, but his parents are human. I had an ogre do a background check. True, as were his grandparents and great-grandparents. But if you continue back much further... <sighs> The atavism of the Mazaku. That's affirmative, sir. It's through that rare phenomena that we think your Meshi inherited his demon blood. And if we're right, which by all signs we are, he's a genetic time bomb just waiting to trigger. DNA, the blueprint for life, passed from parent to child. An atavism is when a trait recurs in a descendant after skipping generations. This can even result in a reversion to the primitive characteristics of a remote ancestor. The atavism of the Mazoku, or half-breed, is an extreme example. The Mazoku can deliberately transmit its DNA recessively until it reaches an heir strong enough to succeed it, creating a demon sleeper. So guys, really to wrap things up, this is a must-play simply based on the story and atmosphere alone. And then there's the up-and-close personal executions that were gorgeously violent. We're going to take a look at a couple of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff right there. All right. Second off, Jackie's voice actor is incredible. He literally sounds like an authentic New York hitman that would kill you and your mother. If there's one untouchable in this business, it's Butcher Joyce. You put out a hit on some guy, Butcher flushes his body. No one's ever the wise. Butcher knows everyone's business. But what keeps him alive is that he never, ever chooses a side. Yeah. Too bad there's a war. And at this time, the graphics were incredible. I still remember seeing the trailer for this game that had a Marilyn Manson song in it, Crucifixion in Space, and thinking, oh my god, this game might look better than Gears of War. And this is back in, I believe, 2007. And then we get to my favorite part of the game, the level design. Now, a lot of the early game will feel like you're in the subway a lot and just roaming New York City. But as the game progresses, you go to one of the coolest levels I've ever seen of any game ever when you go to literal hell. But it's a whole new ballpark. It's not just some ground of fire or some Dante's Inferno depiction. It's the trenches of World War I. The four horsemen are roaming the battlefield. Death is all around. You're fighting corpses, dead men, on both sides, just fighting the living. The depiction is so amazing and so dark. It's crazy to think that a lot of our ancestors fought in this war. But all those emotions right there, that is the perfect theme for this game. It's about the darkness, the gritty, the uneasy, not knowing what's going to happen. Jackie's not knowing if he's even Jackie anymore. And I'm not going to spoil the rest of the game for you, because I hope this inspired anyone to pick this game up. It's also a comic series, if you want to get into that. I know it goes longer than the game does. The game also had a sequel, so if you play it, you like it, there's going to be a, there's a darkness too you could jump right into. And also, one of my favorite shows of all time, Yu Yu Hakusho, the clip up before. Great show, fully recommend that as well. Guys, this has been Bodyhead Productions and a small mini-series of the Forgotten Video Game Vault, where I'll be bringing games right to your computer that you might never have heard of. So, make sure you don't miss out on anything. Like the video, subscribe, hit that bell, guys, because you know I'm going to bring another one to you guys soon. Alright, everybody, body head out of here.